everyone knows what glitters is gold. And tonight, they try for that stairway to heaven in a game number seven. It's the NLCS on Fox. Last night, the Redbirds tried a series sore, but Mad Dog Maddox said, first baby, you got a score. And 3-1 means we play one more. Cardman Donovan says this is the season of the switch. St. Louis says their time has come. And Tommy G just loves having that brave boy bubbly. Tonight, both teams in the NL vie for baseball's ultimate honor. It's St. Louis and Atlanta in Game 7 of the National League Championship Series on Fox. In last night's Game 6, the Braves received a boost from some unlikely hitting heroes as Atlanta tied the NLCS at 3. In 1992, it was the same story as that man, Francisco Cabrera, delivered until the Braves World Series win the greatest, one of the greatest moments in Atlanta Braves history. This line drive, base hit into left field, scored Sid Bream in the 1992 NLCS. The Braves won their second pennant and, of course, went on to the World Series. And Francisco Cabrera is on hand to throw out the first pitch here in Game 7 of the NLCS with the World Series berth on the line for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves here in Fulton County Stadium. And hello again, everybody. I'm Chip Carey, along with Dave Winfield and Steve Lyons. Welcome to Fox Sports coverage of Game 7 of the National League Championship Series. For baseball fans, friends, this is must-see TV. It all comes down to one game. The winner of tonight's ball game advances to the 1996 World Series to take on the New York Yankees. It has been a fantastic series to this point. Yes, it has. There's a lot of emotion here tonight, but these teams don't show it because they're both very composed. But I can tell you, when they went to bed last night, I think Atlanta had the more restful sleep because they've just won two games, they're scoring, and St. Louis is struggling a little now. You talk about the impact of this ball game, Game 7. The winner gets to play in the World Series. The loser goes home. It doesn't <laughs> seem that fair. But I'll tell you what, both teams are cool. I had a chance to sit down earlier today with Game 7 starter, Tommy Glavin, and I also talked to Ron Gant. When I spoke to Gant, I asked him, is there any team in this country that you'd rather beat than these Atlanta Braves? I, I doubt it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. I, I really want to win really bad. Um, you know, yeah, I'm playing my former mates, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a situation that no matter who was out there, I want to win, and I want to win bad. It just happens to be Atlanta and... Uh, and it makes it a little, little extra, it gives me a little extra boost and uh, makes me concentrate a little more. Uh, I think the one thing that this club has always done well is responded to, to having us back against the wall and that's because we don't panic, because we don't get caught up in the moment and realize that, hey, you know, we go out there tomorrow and, and win that ball game, we can change things a little bit and, and that's the approach we've had is, uh, I know people hate hearing it, but you got to take it a game at a time and, and the only way we had a chance to win this thing was to get into this position we're in now, so now we have to see what happens. Oh, you got to love those baseball cliches this time of year, guys. The Cardinals' middle of the order has been very productive when they've won. Not so bad in the losses, although Ron Gant, the big hitting hero in Game 3 against Tom Glavin with the two home runs, just one for ten since that point in the series. And, guys, the Cardinals really need Ron Gant to try to exact that revenge if they're to knock off the Braves tonight. Hey, Chip, this is the beauty of baseball, though. Tom Glavin is a smart guy. He knows what happened to him last time he faced Ron Gant. Ron Gant is not going to be able to be the hero tonight. Tom Glavin a pitch around him if and when he can. The rest of the guys in the middle of the lineup are going to have to step up to get it done. Well, it doesn't surprise me all that much that the middle of the order hasn't been all that productive because in these series, you always look for a bit player to jump up and bite you. You know, for the Braves, it's always been Mark Lemke. Has average seasons during the year, and then in the playoffs, he becomes little October, <laughs> not Mr. October, but he does it for those Braves. How about the Cardinals? Dimitri Young, the youngster, gets his first postseason start for John Mabry. Tony La Russa playing a hunch. He thinks this kid could knock a ball in the gap, and that could be the difference. Well, Dimitri might be the man, but it's going to have to be, again, the other guys have to step up and do the job. And, and these guys are both so calm and cool right now. We had a chance to walk through both clubhouses. The Cardinals were actually watching 
a tape of Caddyshack, and Donovan Osborne was working on his swing. So no problems there. They're ready to go. So it's game seven. You don't have to say much more than that. Donovan Osborne pitching for the St. Louis Cardinals, going for his second win of the postseason. His pitching opponent tonight, Tom Glavin, who won game six of the World Series last year for the Braves. It's the Cardinals and Atlanta. The World Series berth on the line. Our trio of Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, and Bob Brenly will have the game for you next. the Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves in game number seven of the 1996 NLCS. Who goes on? Who goes home? We're about to find out. And hello, everybody. My name is Joe Buck. Happy to have you with us for game number seven with my partners, Bob Brenly and Tim McCarver. Well, Tim McCarver, last night, Tony La Russa ends up going with a rookie, Alan Bennis. He pitched very well. The bad news was he was hooked up with Greg Maddox. So tonight, he has a very rested Donovan Osborne on the mound. Yeah, Donovan Osborne physically rested tonight and emotionally stable in game three. It's seven strong innings for Tony La Russa being the winner against the Atlanta Braves. And that's exactly what Tony La Russa will look for tonight. He'll take that in a minute. What are the early keys to be to keep his emotions under control in the first and second inning. He does have a tendency to get wild early. The curveball, the key pitch for him. And a big thing right here, he ought to pitch to his catcher and not the batter. When a young pitcher is intimidated in games like this, and certainly this is an intimidating situation, he has a tendency to pitch to the batter and, that, and to throw the ball to the strike zone. And when he pitches to the catcher, he throws the ball through the strike zone. And that's a big distinction. Only the second LCS start for Donovan Osborne. However, number eight in the young career for Tommy Glavin. Talk to Bob Brenly in a moment. Right now, here are Tom Glavin's thoughts on pitching in game seven. And obviously, we want to go out there and win it and, and have an opportunity to defend our world championship. But uh, if we don't, uh, it's certainly not the end of the world. And I think that, uh, I mean, that kind of attitude has kind of helped me over the years not to uh, go out there and put so much pressure on yourself that it makes it hard to perform. Very gracious of Tom Glavin to talk to us on the day he's going to pitch. How relaxed is this guy? The Cardinals may be in for a long night. Well, the Cardinals hitters would be well advised to heed the words of the song Dixie. Look away, look away, look away. Because Tom Glavin is going to live on that outside corner. And that brings us to his first key for success in the ball game tonight. Never give in to the strike zone. He's going to try to get the Cardinals hitters to chase bad pitches out of the zone, which is especially going to be a factor with Paul Runge behind the plate, who calls a very wide strike zone. And the second key for his success is to stay stubborn, stay off the corner, stay out of the fat part of the plate. Here we go, game number seven. The two left-handers hook up. Who's going to the World Series? Who's going home? We're about to find out. It comes up next from your local Fox station. Well, it all comes down to this, to the 1996 National League Championship Series. Here we go, game seven. Cardinals had a three games to one lead. It's now tied three games apiece. Cardinal lineup starts with Clayton and McGee. Ron Gant against Glavin hit two home runs in game number three. Then it's Brian Jordan cleaning up in center field. Gary Gaetti at third base. Dimitri Young making his first postseason start. He's a rookie, only 23 years old. Then Tom Pagnazzi catching. Mike Gallego in the lineup again tonight. Playing second base, batting eighth, pitching and batting ninth. The young Donovan Osborne. The Braves defense, Mark Lemke. You can highlight him on the defense if you want. You can highlight him on the offensive side if you want. He is playing behind the left-handed starter, Tom Glavin. This is a rematch of game number three of this series, a game in which the Cardinals won 3-2. And both pitchers pitched very well in game three. Tom Glavin made very few mistakes in that ball game, but unfortunately for him, the mistakes that he made ended up in the bleachers. Ronnie Gant took advantage of a couple of hangers over the middle of the plate and rode him right out of the ballpark. And both pitchers, Bob, are completely different as far as their makeup is concerned. Tom Glavin, as cool as the other side of the pillow, wonder if he sweats at times when he pitches. Donovan Osborne, very excitable. And we mentioned in the opening, Tony La Russa will be keeping an eye on him. But you can see it in their facial expressions, the difference in their emotional makeups. Really goes back to how these two teams approach games as a whole. Donovan Osborne are very representative of the way the Cardinals play, filled with emotion. Tom Glavin, Tom Cool collected. You'd never know this was game seven. Here we go. Royce Clayton leads it off. Ball on. And already Royce 
plate and wants the home plate umpire, Paul Rungi, in his 23rd season to check the baseball. He's behind home plate. We've already talked about his strike zone, which tends to go wide. Mark Hirschbeck at first, Bob Davidson at second, Joe West at third, with Crawford down the left field foul line, and Eddie Montague, who worked the plate so well here last night, down the right field line. 2 0. Oh. What Glavin will try to do early in the ball game is try to feel out that strike zone, try to see how far Paul Rungi will go out on the corners, and as soon as he establishes that limit, that's where he's going to try to work consistently all night. Layton swinging on 2-0, two, oh, two balls and a strike. You know, it's no secret we're not uh, breaking any ground here talking about Paul Rungi's strike zone. It's been pretty much the same for 23 years. The hitters for both teams know it. The pitchers for both teams know it. He learned it from his dad, Ed Rungi, who was an American League umpire. Two and one on Clayton. Now two and two. Royce Clayton has had a hit in every start he has made in this series. Making his fifth start, Ozzie Smith had two starts. The two games that John Smoltz was on the mound for Atlanta. Full count on Clayton. Remember in game three, it was the Cardinals' plan to take a lot of pitches against Tommy Glavitt. When you do that, you take that outside part of the plate, or the pitch just off the plate, away from Glavin. Into right field, Jermaine Dye is there, one away. So Clayton, who has consistently pounded the ball the other way in this series, goes to right. He's the first out here in the first inning. The batter is McGee, who last night had a couple of hits against a very tough Greg Maddox. Saw Greg Maddox last night, a master at first pitch strikes. Tom Glavin does not believe in that. He throws a lot of first pitch balls, pitches behind in the count often. And because of Glavin's exceptional control and the fact, as we mentioned, he likes to work that outside corner, it enables Marquise Grissom to cheat way over into right center field. Jermaine Dye hugging the line in right. One out, nobody on. Two balls and a strike on McGee. It's hard to believe that Tom Glavin, in seven NLCS starts before tonight, had a combined record of one and five which includes the loss in game three in St. Louis. Three and one on McGee. Three two count now a three one count and on a three one count it was Ron Gantz Homer in the first inning in game three. Full count. So a full count on Clayton leading off, and now a full count on McGee with Ron Gantz up next. Well, it's pretty obvious, at least from the first two hitters, that is what you said, Tim, the Cardinals are going to try to work deep in the count because we've seen Willie McGee swing at the first pitch almost every at bat in this series. Do it again. Tony La Russa believes that tonight is his team's best chance to win in the last three games with Smoltz in the final game game five in St. Louis last night Maddox was unbeatable didn't matter what lineup he was facing tonight he thinks is the Cardinals best chance down the right field line for die that'll get out of play. You think about La Russa and his approach pitching Alan Bennis last night. Granted, Alan Bennis got the loss, but even had Osborne pitch last night. Can't imagine him doing much better than Alan Bennis did. And now you've got Osborne rested for game seven. Again, the full count pitch to McGee. Swinging bunt, foul. Well, considering that Andy Bennis was not nearly effective pitching on three days rest, Todd Stolomeyer was. 
nowhere close to being effective pitching on three days rest. I think that pretty much helped Tony La Russa make the decision to go with Alan Bennis last night and a well-rested Donovan Osborne tonight. There you see the Bennis brothers. Allen went five innings last night, allowed two runs on only three hits. Three two to McGee. Two up. That'll bring in Ron Gant in game three. He went deep twice off Tom Glavin. His thoughts. According to uh, how Glavin pitches, he's not going to change his game plan at all. I mean, he's going to live outside on that outside corner of the plate, and um, he's going to make the, the hitters hit his pitch. Um, so I'm going to have to stay out there. I'm going to have to do the same things I did there. And if he makes that mistake again, I'll be ready for it. But uh, if not, we're going to have some tough at bats up there. His first at bat of the night, two out, nobody on. First inning, ball one. Pitch one has been ball one to each of the first three hitters. Is that what you call staying stubborn? Staying stubborn. Now two and up. That's why Bob said uh, that line from Dixie, look away, look away, look away. Right <laughs> well, that's about the easiest scouting report you could give to a team trying to face Tom Glavin and have any success offensively. Jordan waiting on deck. Lavin has not been close for the first three to Gantt. To the left side, Chipper Jones. A good first inning for Glavin. Cardinals go in order. Bottom of inning number one, game seven here in Atlanta. No score. Only two off the LCS record. Then Jermaine Dye in right field. Andrew Jones, the 19-year-old, makes the start in left. Jeff Blauser at short, batting eighth, and Tommy Glavin pitching and batting ninth. The Cardinal defense, Dimitri Young, his first career postseason start. He's a rookie, only 23 years old, just turned 23. And on the mound is the winner from game three, Donovan Osborne. And you can see the emotion right there, totally opposite from Tom Glavin, his record for the season, and remember the curveball, a vital pitch to get over early, and his fastball's in the strike zone until he can settle himself down. In game three, he gave up a leadoff single to Grissom and then threw a wild pitch with that curveball in the first inning to advance it. Here is Grissom, and there's a leadoff hit. This is one thing a team can do if you have a pitcher on the mound who tends to get excitable early in the game. Come after him aggressively. Grissom swinging at the first pitch, a ball up in the strike zone. Once again, goes right back up the middle with it. Wonder if Bobby Cox will butt and play for one run with Glavin on the mound. We'll find out right here. Here's Lemke. Going to swing. Grissom heads for third. They hold Grissom at third on a double, and it's second and third. Nobody out. I guess that answers that question, huh, Bobby? No fun. High fastball laced over the diving Gaetti. And with nobody out, Jimmy Williams shrewdly holding Grissom at third base. He's got the meat of his order coming up. Doesn't want to make that first out at home plate with Chipper Jones, Fred McGriff, and Javi Lopez to follow. Good job by Tom Pagnazzi and Royce Clayton right here. Try to slow this down a little bit. Let Osborne catch his breath, regroup a little bit. Once that snowball starts going downhill, somebody's got to stop it or it just won't stop. I mean... That's a big stop sign right there. It's interesting, the approach by the Cardinals, three three-ball counts by Glavin, and two pitches, nobody out second, third for the Braves. The third game in a row, Grissom has gone up there hacking at the first pitch. A single, a double, it's second and third, nobody out for Chipper Jones. Showing 
bunt, but you can't believe he's going to lay one down. Strike one. <laughs> you can see Bobby Cox saying swing. Yeah, I mean, Bobby Cox is surprised as anybody. He has no idea what Chipper Jones is trying to do. To third, Gaetti holds Grissom, one out. Good play by Gary Gaetti, four-time Gold Glove winner or Gold Glove Award winner in the American League. He made the dive. He looked at Grissom. He got the out, one away. Gaetti playing even with the grass there in the event that Jones does decide to bunt. A lot of times at third base, you don't really have time to do much else but take a step and a dive, and that's what Gaetti does right here. That could be a huge play with the struggling Fred McGriff up now. McGriff only four hits in this series. To the shortstop, Grissom is not breaking. Now he comes home to put the Braves on top. They have Lemke caught in the rundown, two out, and Atlanta out in front, one to nothing. This is about as tacky a way to get a run as you can imagine. Bad base running by both Grissom and Lemke. Grissom's got to be coming all the way. A ball to the middle infield as you go. And Mark Lemke caught off second. Grissom should break immediately. Lemke should stay. The ball should be 6-3. You still have a guy in scoring position. So the Braves take a lead. Now runner at first, two out for Javi Lopez. And a strike over the inside corner. Interesting that when Royce Clayton made his throw, he threw to third. They had Grissom caught between third and home. If he throws home, I don't believe a run scores. Grissom was at a dead standstill between third and home. One on, two out. That gets away from Pagnazzi, not far enough, and it's a 1-1 count. I think you're right, Joe. I think if Clayton throws home, they get him immediately. But if Gaetti throws home, it's too late because by that time, Grissom had taken off. Score to fielder's choice, 6-5, 6-5 to put the Braves on top. Now Lopez ahead of the count, two and one. Good fastball, two and two. You can see that fastball had a lot of run on it. Tom Pagnazzi from his target on the outside corner had to track that ball across the center of the plate. Pagnazzi set up outside. This fastball cuts back inside. Very awkward catch of that ball. Two and two on Lopez. If Donovan Osborne and the Cardinals can get out of this inning with only one run crossing the plate, they ought to sprint off the field. Absolutely. One on, two out. McGriff will go. We'll do it again. Mentioned during the lineup, Xavi Lopez, 11 hits. The LCS record is 13 hits by Will Clark. Did it back in 1989, but in only five games. 1996 postseason. Javi Lopez has now overtaken Bernie Williams and has the best average going. McGriff at first, two out, he'll go. All four. Two on, two out for Jermaine Dye. Well, we've seen Donovan Osborne walking 
Javier Lopez. He missed with the curveball to Lopez. Those were the two things, wildness early and getting his curveball over. Very, very important for Osborne. Box box, top left hand corner of your screen. Runners on at first and second, two out. Braves out in front by a run. 22 year old Jermaine Die, line drive, base hit left field. Here's McGriff. Gantz throw, no good. Two to nothing, Atlanta. We saw Jimmy Williams throw up the stop sign with Marquise Grissom with nobody out, but with two outs in the inning, much more aggressive on the part of the third base coach. He's waving Fred McGriff home before he even got to third base. The throw was strong enough, but wrong windage. Three first ball hits in this inning. So the Atlanta Braves taking a totally different approach than the Cardinals. They're going up there hacking. And they're out in front two to nothing. So Osborne and the Cardinals will not get out of this first inning with only one run crossing the plate. The entire infield along with Dave Duncan meeting on the mound. It's first and third two out with 19 year old Andrew Jones coming up. I think when you see all the infielders out there with runners on at first and third what they're trying to determine is what they do. If the runner at first, Jermaine Dye, tries to steal second base, I don't think he'll try to do it unless the count's 0-2, 1-2 to Andrew Jones. Jones trying to make it a bigger first inning for the Braves. Runners at the corners, two out. Pretty close. Check on Dye. With Andrew Jones at the plate, you are looking at the definition of confidence by a manager in a very young player. He does not mind at all throwing 19-year-old Andrew Jones into game seven. One and oh. Bobby Cox telling us before the game that he may hit a home run tonight. He said the batting practices that Andrew Jones has been taking, he's been hitting balls way up in the upper deck. been a long first inning for Osborne of all the great players that have come through this Braves organization in the last few years with Chipper Jones and Klesko and Lopez this is the guy that Bobby Cox says has the best chance to be a great player a five tool player two and oh to count base hit three to nothing Atlanta No strikes, a predictable pitch laced to left field. So Andrew Jones gets his first postseason hit. And to it his first RBI. Now ball one in the dirt. Bagnazzi saves a wild pitch as Blauser digs in. Seven Braves hitters tonight. Five balls have been hit right on the button. Even the good play by Gaetti hit by Chipper Jones. Andy Venice getting ready for St. Louis. The one high pitch after another out of the hand of Donovan Osborne is getting hammered here in the first inning. Front of a changeup, strike one. It's been a three run, four hit inning for the Braves.
Todd, that looked like that running fastball that you were talking about a couple of hitters ago. Starts the pitch on the inside part of the plate, runs back in, looked like it caught Blauser right on the left knee. Blauser was hit by a pitch in last night's ball game. That will load the bases for one of the game's best hitting pitchers, Tom Blavin. up there Hackett strike one trying to guide the ball to the plate. It's one and one. Osborne struggling to get these pitches down. Hasn't had any command of his breaking ball whatsoever here in the first inning. Two and one. The only low pitches that he has thrown the whole inning have been balls in the dirt. Bases loaded, two out. Into left field. Can't, can't get it. That will empty the bases. Lavin heads for third. Six to nothing, Atlanta. Gant makes a valiant effort, realizing that if he misses this ball, it's going to be a 6 0 game at least. With that swing of the bat by John Glavin. It will be the end of the night for Donovan Osborne. He could not get through the first. Six runs, five hits, and a pitching change here in the first inning. Not what Donovan dreamed about last night. He's gone in the first. Braves up by six. Donovan Osborne goes two-thirds of an inning, allowing six runs on five hits. Now a runner at third, two out for Grissom. To the right side, Dimitri Young will watch it head out of play for strike one from Andy Bennis. Andy made one relief appearance in 1996, picked up a save against Colorado. 18 and 10 during the regular season. And was the starter in game one. A loss here in Atlanta. Now this is the most thankless job on a pitching staff. Come in when your team is getting blown out in the first inning and try to stop the bleeding and put up some zeros until your offense can get on track. Venice made a start in game one. Made a start in game four on three days rest. Lasted only five innings. Here he is in game seven. Runner at third, two out. Had him reaching. Inning over. A six-run first inning for Atlanta. They're trying to get back to the World Series. They hand it over to Glavin out in front by six. Well, there it is. After one inning in Game 7, the Braves out in front 6 to nothing. They change shortstops. Rafael Belliard takes over for Blauser, who is hit on that front knee, the left knee, between innings. Ozzie Smith trying to pump up Donovan Osborne, and he can't feel anything but sorry for Donovan Osborne, who comes into tonight's game. You can see him talking to himself. Had, I'm sure, all kinds of 
visions of a wonderful start here tonight, and that just didn't happen. Ryan Jordan swinging at the first pitch, pops it up. One out. So Jordan didn't hang around long. He pops it foul to the first baseman, McGriff. And he's the first out here in the second. Well, it's important for the Cardinals, even though they're behind six to nothing, to not get away from their game plan. What we talked about in the first inning, try to work Glavin deep in the count. He makes very few mistakes, but the deeper in the count he goes, the better chance you have of getting a good ball to him. Here's Guy Eddy. Seven out of 21 in this series. And he looks at a ball outside. During the regular season, Gaetti hit 274 with 23 home runs. That is well hit into center, sending Grissom back to us. Sounded like a broken bat there by Gary Gaetti trying to hit that fastball out away from him. Appeared he hit it right off the end of the bat. We've seen a lot of broken bats in this NLCS. That will happen when you have the kind of pitching staffs we've seen here. Guy Eddy the second out. Here's Dimitri Young, and he takes a strike as Lopez, the catcher, pulls it back into the strike zone. Glavin missing with that outside corner in the first inning. He has got that lane down now, however. Dimitri Young, a 333 hitter at Triple A this year. There's another perfect pitch. And it's 0 2. Well, you can't hit it, but you can't take it. <laughs> perfect if you're glabbing. A couple inches outside with strike two. Dimitri Young has been a big part of this series. Ray Langford in the jacket has not does not have a hit in this NLCS bothered by the rotator cuff in his left shoulder good swing by Young stays alive one and two well, we talked about Glavin earlier never gives into the strike zone he knows when to use his good fastball that last point right there he doesn't do it a lot but he can throw that fastball 91 92 miles an hour inside the righties. There's one right there. And a 2 2 count on Dimitri Young. First time he's intentionally come in on a right hander all night. Every pitch is not designed to get a hitter out. Some pitches are designed to set up the next one. Like that. Inning over. Fastball inside. Change up low and away. I think that formula works for Tom Glavin. Six to nothing at Lennon. Fox Sports coverage of Major League Baseball's National League Championship Series is brought to you by Buick LeSabre for safety and peace of mind. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. By Wendy's and the new Bigger Plumper Grilled Chicken Breast Filet Sandwich. Try one today. And by AT&T, your true choice. Beautiful night in Atlanta. News from the Kroger Blimp, Spirit of Atlanta, helping us out again here tonight. Six to nothing Braves in the bottom of the second inning. It will be Lemke, Chipper Jones, and Fred McGriff. First full inning of work for Andy Bennis, ball one to Lemke. Was this guy been doing it from the get-go here? I mean, and they pulled the curtain up on the NLCS. Mark Lemke was ready. Has 11 hits, 24 at bats, a first inning double. But if he went back through the series and picked out Lemke's hits, they would predominantly be on pitches up. And when Donovan Osborne missed up back in the first inning, Lemke doubled down the left field line. Two balls and a strike. Into center for Jordan. One out. 
This is why Bob Brimley says in Dixie, you should look away, away, away. Right here, look at the remarkable efficiency of Glavin. Clayton, away. McGee, away. Gant, 3-0, away. Jordan, away. Gaetti, high and away. Away, but to Young. Now Venice goes away for strike one on Chipper Jones. Chipper grounded out in that first inning. The first inning started very strangely for Atlanta. They get a leadoff hit, then a double. At second and third, nobody out. Chipper Jones showed bunt on the first pitch. Then grounded to third, a diving play by Gaetti for the first down. Then McGriff grounds to short. The Cardinals had Grissom hung up between third and home, but Clayton threw to third. Grissom scored. And after that, it was a walk, a single, a single, a hit batsman, and a three-run triple by Tom Blavin. Two-two to Jones. Base hit. Chipper Jones is a very good hitter on pitches down, and he got a slider over the heart of the plate and down low around the knees where he can just drop that head of the bat on the ball, shoot it through the right side of the infield. The swing is much quicker on a pitch that's down low in the strike zone than it is on a pitch that's up above the belt. One on, one out for McGriff. Into left field. Two out in the inning. Yeah, if guys didn't like balls down and in, they'd make tees higher. McGriff has got to become a bit of a concern for the Atlanta Braves if they head into postseason against the Yankees. We're a long way from that. We're only in the second inning here in game seven. But McGriff, four hits in this LCS. That's it. One home run, which came in that blowout, 14 to nothing in St. Louis. One on, two out, and a check on Chipper Jones. Javier Lopez at the plate, a walk and a run scored back in the first. Hey! Hey! I understand Jeff Blauser was hit in the patella tendon in his left knee. And for precautionary reasons, the Braves took him out in the top of his second. One on, two out for Atlanta here in the second with Lopez looking at ball one. You can really see the contrasting styles. The Cardinals pitchers mostly working inside, while Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox, the Braves pitchers working mostly outside. Pitch one and one. What a year it's been for Andy Bennis. His first year in a Cardinal uniform started this season one and seven. Ended the regular season 18 and 10. He's a veteran of many years in the big league, but you could say Andy Bennis grew up a lot during 1996. To the left side for Clayton. The force to end the inning. No runs, one hit, a man left after two, six to nothing Braves. Back to Fulton County after this from your local station. You have to wonder what the thought process is there, don't you? I think yes. that's supposed to be at an opera somewhere. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Very creative fans here at Fulton County Stadium. The Braves are trying to extend the life of this ballpark. 31st and final year of baseball in Fulton County Stadium. For next year, moving across the street. Magnazzi caught by Lemke. A line drive off the bat of Magnazzi, who has only two hits in this series. His frustration continues. Good approach by Tom Pagnazzi. Take that outside pitch the other way. 
but better defense by Mark Lemke. One out, nobody on, and the batter is Gallego. Only one hit in the postseason for Gallego. Took a fastball strike. His first year in the National League. One ball, one strike. Gallego's only hit was a big hit in game two off Maddox. Which started the game winning rally for St. Louis. The Braves trying to become the first team in NLCS history. Be down three games to one in a best of seven series. Come back and win it. And the eighth team in postseason history, including World Series play, could come back and win it. Maddox, the starter and winner here last night. Still one and two on Gallego. Cardinal offense has not been getting it done for St. Louis, especially lately. And as you combine the averages, as a team, the Cardinals hitting only 212 in this NLCS. Down the right field line, trouble if it's fair, it is just foul. This Braves pitching staff can make your offense look anemic. We saw Maddox on top of his game last night. John Smoltz has been on top of his game. And so far, Tom Glavin is doing what he needs to do to be successful. As you see that foul ball, just a few inches foul. Talking about down three games to one. Cardinals have lost two best of seven series. After leading three games to one in 68, the World Series to Detroit, and in 85, the World Series to Kansas City. Trying to mount a rally here in the third. Down by six. Gallego pops it up. Grissom in center, two up. Well, there you see Maddox last night starter with his sneakers on. John Smoltz, however, has his cleats on. Bobby Cox told us that he would not hesitate to use John Smoltz for an inning tonight if necessary. However, Greg Maddox has much more comfortable puppies right now. <laughs> Here's Bennis. And the way this is going for Bobby Cox, you don't know the Cardinals still have 19 outs with which to work. But the way it's going for Bobby Cox, if Smoltz doesn't get in this game, he'll be the starter against the Yankees on Saturday night. Two out, nobody on. 0 and 2 to count on Andy Bennis. Glavin has been perfect through three. And to his record, a three run triple. Two and a half innings, Braves by six. Six to nothing, Atlanta, bottom of the third inning. Working with us for this final NLCS game is Kroger's airship, the spirit of Atlanta. Tonight is officially the final broadcast for the spirit of Atlanta. We're departing the skies later this week. And we want to thank Kroger and the spirit of Atlanta for all their help, helping us cover these games here at Fulton County Stadium. One ball, one strike on Jermaine Dye. His RBI single kept that first inning alive. He later scored a run. Venice throwing very well, trying to keep it 6 nothing. One ball, two strikes. Alan Venice pitching so well here last night. Now it's bigger brother Andy. Two and two. Andy throws that hard, sinking, heavy fastball as well as a real sharp slider. It's important you don't lose sight of all your pitches as well. A lot of times you get a blowout game like this early and you forget what you have to do to be successful. Outside corner according to Paul Rungi. And one out, the first strikeout for a St. Louis pitcher. 
It lives beneath the city streets. It only comes out at night. No one believes such a creature could exist until now. Don't miss an all-new X-Files tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, right here on Fox. As far as the St. Louis Cardinals are concerned, and it, uh, the Atlanta Braves have been that creature that lived beneath the street. It has been a nightmare for the last two-plus games for the Cardinals, who have been outscored 23-1 to since they won that emotional game four. One out, nobody on. 2-0. The St. Louis Cardinals in 1996 had arguably as good a season as anybody in Major League Baseball. When you consider everything that's gone on in St. Louis, it starts with new ownership, it starts with Tony La Russa in his first year in the National League getting his team to the National League Championship Series. Amazing. 3 0 to count now, 3 and 1 on Andrew Jones. Jones and RBI single his first postseason hit. To the right side for Gallego. Two up. You know, you hear so much about manager of the year, especially in the National League. We've done games talking about Bruce Bochy, the job he did this year in San Diego, which was phenomenal. Rarely do you hear the name of Tony La Russa. Man, could you make a strong argument that La Russa, in his first year in the National League, getting this team to turn it around and play this well, as many new parts, he definitely ought to be considered for manager of the year. Particularly since he was learning a new league, and he was very honest and open about that when he first came over to the Cardinals. He was being questioned repeatedly about did he think it would be harder to manage in the National League with no DH, and well, he says it's not brain surgery. I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually, and uh, he certainly figured it out. Yeah, not only a new team, but a new style of play, too. This is Belliard, his first at bat. A one ball, two strike count. And the other dugout is the guy who gets overlooked for what he does with Atlanta Bobby Cox. Do not underestimate what he does for this Atlanta Braves team. Belliard is two for his last two. An RBI hit here last night, and he's on with two out in the third. That'll bring in Tom Glavin who won his third Silver Slugger Award this year by hitting 289, tops among pitchers, and in the first inning, even though Andrew Jones fell flat on his face, a two-out, three-run triple, which took it from a three-to-nothing game to a six-to-nothing game. Strike one from Venice. Two out hit by Belliard. Lavin can't complain with that call. They count 0 2. A uh, pitcher should never argue on a borderline pitch that's called a strike because I'm sure he's going to want that same pitch and he's been getting that same pitch. Braves pitchers, the, the entire staff, Smoltz and Maddox and Denny Nagel and Glavin, they, they all do everything it takes to win ball games. They swing the bat, they bunt, they field their positions well, and they can throw that ball. So Glavin already has three RBIs. The only pitchers to have more than three RBIs in an LCS game. Steve Carlton did it with four in game three in 1978. Bills in Los Angeles and Mike Quayle. At a grand slam in 1970. You saw John Smoltz yawning there. I bet when John Smoltz got up this morning, he didn't think he'd be yawning in the third inning of tonight's game. <laughs> Talking to Jeff Porter, the assistant trainer. Two and two on Glavin. Smoltz started game five on Monday night. Went seven innings, allowing no runs on seven hits. 
One on, two out. Clavin strikes out. Second strikeout of the inning for Andy Bennis. We are through three. Game seven. Atlanta behind Glavin out in front by six. Top of the order coming up for St. Louis as they try to jump back into this game, trailing six to nothing into the fourth inning. Here in Atlanta, game seven. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without express written consent. Fourth inning, here's the opportunity for the Cardinals if they're going to make a game of it to get it done. Clayton McGee and Gant. If anybody gets on, Brian Jordan against Tom Glavin, who has been perfect through three. Strike one. Clayton ran the count full back in the first inning, then line to right. So 0 for 1, but hitting 353 in this NLCS. Royce Clayton will take over full time in 1997. It's short for the Cardinals. Another one into right. This one falls in front of Die, and the Cardinals have their first base runner. Clayton has had a very strong NLCS. He's had a very good approach at the plate in almost every at bat he's had. Made up his mind he's going to hit the ball to the opposite field here. The Braves expect him to hit the ball to the opposite field. They're swung around to right, but able to dunk it in just in front of Jermaine Die. Talking about Clayton taking over full time in 1997. This could conceivably be, if the Cardinals can't come back, the final big league game in the wonderful 19 year career of Ozzie Smith. Hit and run is on. Down by six. The Cardinals are running. That's strike one on McGee. Well, that's what the Cardinals would do uh, if it, the score were tied or if they were ahead by a couple of runs to try to manufacture more. And even though they trail by six, Tony LaRusso putting the running game in effect the first time he has a chance to this is the first base runner the Cardinals have had and we're in the fourth inning into right for die one out deja vu all over again huh Bob the hit zone to Ron Gann you remember there was one on and one out when he hit the home run against Tom Glavin in the first inning of game three. An inside hitter, Glavin running the count to three and one. And Gant got a low fastball and took it out of Bush Stadium. Six to nothing Atlanta. Gant trying to help the Cardinals jump back in. Strike one. Career against Glavin during the regular season. Wow. Four home runs when he had the two during the regular season, and now the two in this NLCS. One on, one out. One ball, one strike. Well, it figures that Gant would have good success against Glavin if anybody was going to. He likes the ball inside. Consequently, he stands very close to the plate. He's able to reach that outside pitch better than the rest of the Cardinal hitters. And if Glavin happens to make a mistake in that red zone, that's the ball that he drives to left field. Strike two. Doesn't matter how close you stand to the plate, you're not going to hit that pitch. That ball had some nasty downward action. You're right, Bob, but he, I think Gant, more than any of the other Cardinal hitters, takes that outside away from Glavin. One, two to Gant. Two balls, two strikes. Saw Javi Lopez with a wiggle of the four fingers there, indicating a changeup. Glavin threw it well wide of the strike zone. Not really too much tricky with nobody at second base. Pretty much just your basic one, two, three, and a wiggle. Fastball, curveball, slider, change. Another changeup. Hard hit into left, but Andrew Jones is there. Sounded like Gant may have broken his bat too up. Well, if you don't break your bat, you at least hit it off the end of the bat. Ron Gant checking right here. 
you could say Glavin not coming in the Gant. Through a high breaking ball right there. The Gant swung through, missed down low. Got a swing and strike down low. That was the change up well wide. And then the change up over the heart of the plate. The Gant hit off the end of the bat. Gant the second out here in the fourth inning as Glavin tries to get around the first hit he is allowed. A lead off hit by Clayton. Here is Jordan. Clayton running. Lopez's throw perfect. Inning over. The Braves are doing everything right so far in game seven. Bottom of the fourth inning. Atlanta out in front by six. First pitch, bottom of the fourth inning is low for a ball. Six to nothing Atlanta. They send in Grissom. His third at bat of the night. One out of two in the first inning. By that guy, Eddie. Funny hop. One out. Well, you're going to see the stolen base attempt by Royce Clayton here. Watch Raphael Belliard get out in front of the base and block second base almost like a catcher would at home plate and really give Royce Clayton nowhere to go. Catchers love to see this. Got the leg and the glove in front of the bag. Clayton can't even get his hand in there. So Glavin has faced the minimum through four. Andy Bennis has been outstanding since entering back in the first. Donovan Osborne, the Cardinal starter, should go only two-thirds of an inning. When you're trailing by six runs, you're forced into a passive game, a one base at a time game. I think Clayton's steal attempt would have been proper with Pat Nazi or Gallego up, but not Brian Jordan. I think you've got to give Brian Jordan a chance to pop a two-run home run. Well, the Cardinals can utilize what, what power they have. Tony La Russa telling us the first four hitters in his lineup are basically on their own. Yeah. Clayton may have been running on his own and his out was the final out in the top of this fourth inning three and one now on Lemke Chipper Jones on deck we'll see him now first walk for Bennis second walk handed to Atlanta so far Jones had a hit his last time up. Rounded out in that long. Six run, five hit first inning. And the 2-0 to Chipper Jones. It's 3-0. Bennis is not giving in to Chipper Jones here. A 2-0 changeup right there. Showing the respect that he has for Chipper Jones. Unfortunately, he missed the strike zone and now finds himself in a deeper hole. Chipper Jones may be hitting here. Back-to-back -back walks. Two on, one out. Here's Fred McGriff. You could read uh, Andy Bennis's lips. He's asking Tom Pagnazzi, is that ball down? Is that ball down? Paul Rungi may be liberal off the plate, but he does make a pitcher get the ball up. Oh. 
Here comes McGriff. Game five on Monday night in St. Louis. McGriff had by far his best game with regard to swings taken. He had an RBI single and a two-run homer. He gets his first hit of the night into right. Here comes Lemke. He'll score. Over to third is Jones. Safe. It gets away. Chipper Jones will score, and it's 8-0 Atlanta. Cox will tell you that Javi Lopez is the strongest hitter on this Braves team as far as pure power, and he shows it here going to the deepest part of Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium. Now Jermaine Dye looks at a strike. Javier Lopez is now one hit away from tying an LCS record of 13 hits. should tell you he has not looked at the reports for the Yankees yet. He said if they go to the World Series and it looks like they will more and more as we go he will have a busy day tomorrow reading all the scouting reports trying to figure out a way to beat New York. It's 10 to nothing here in the fourth inning in game seven and Andrew Jones looks at ball one. And it appears more and more likely this is the final big league game for certain Hall of Famer Ozzie Smith. We will hang it up at the end of the night. Go into the hall in 2002. Side for Clayton. Base hit. When a guy can run like Andrew Jones, 
and Royce Clayton takes that much time to come up with the ball, you're not going to get it. You know, they rule this an error, at least initially, but I don't think a good throw gets it. At least it would have been close with the way Andrew Jones gets down the line. Well, it was a mighty slow transfer that Royce Clayton made, and I don't think a good throw gets him either. And that's because he took so long getting the ball from the glove to his hand and then looking at the ball. Watch. Anderson Jones going down the line showing that great speed. But once again, Clayton goes to his forehand on a ball that would have been much easier fielded with the backhand, allowing him to get into position to throw much quicker. So they will keep it an error, E6. But the error did not come in the throw. Evidently, according to the official score, it came in the approach by Royce Clayton. He was a little deliberate in gathering himself to make the throw there. Backhand play would have been much quicker. One on, two out. Belliard to the right side. Gallego ends the inning. A four-run inning for Atlanta. Blowing it wide open here in Game 7. After four, they lead by 10. We are into the fifth inning. Game 7. 10 to nothing, Atlanta. Could very easily be 10 runs on 10 hits. Instead, a play ruled an error. Jordan trying to bunt his way on to try to get something started for St. Louis here in the fifth. Well, normally you wouldn't like to see Brian Jordan bunting, but Chipper Jones is playing well back and well off the line at third base and leading off an inning when you need 10 runs to tie the game. You just need as many base runners as you can get. And invariably, when you make up your mind you're going to bunt for a base hit, Lavin will throw a pitch right down the middle of the plate that would have been a good one to swing at. <laughs> Into left center field, not that well hit. Grissom, one up. And Glavin has still faced the minimum. Folks, Saturday, the World Series on Fox begins as the most storied team in baseball history returns to the Fall Classic after a 15-year absence to battle the winner of this game. The World Series begins Saturday, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, exclusively here on Fox. Here's Gaetti. 7 out of 22 in this series, 0 for 1 tonight. Ball 1 from Glavin. Gaetti has seven postseason RBIs this year. Four of them on a grand slam. The other three on a three-run home run in game one of the division series. Belliard takes care of Gaetti. I got on the wrong subway today. Thought he was in the Bronx, right? Well, he will not be as welcome next week. No. Two out here in the fifth inning, and the batter is Dimitri Young. Struck out his first time. Well hit into left field, but right at Andrew Jones. It's been that kind of night for St. Louis. Glavin has faced the minimum through five. Braves by ten. Fox Sports coverage of Major League Baseball's National League Championship Series is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Advil, advanced medicine for pain. By the Norelco Reflex Action Razor, anything closer could be too close for comfort. And by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Down below the blimp, there's a whole lot of scoring going on. Ten to nothing. It's taking place on the brave side out in front 10 chip I will say this with certainty before the end of the night we will see Ozzy Smith in this game maybe the next inning the pitch is spot up third here's Glavin he's already made his mark at the plate with a two out three run triple in the first inning 
0-2 from Andy Bennis. Ron Gant in left. One out in the bottom of the fifth. through four the Cardinal pitching was right there with the Atlanta Braves starting pitching since games five six and seven the ERA over eleven and a half this tonight starter Donovan Osborne who went only two thirds of the first inning the third for Gaetti Grissom the second out he's now one out of four this the other night most of the veterans will go up there hacking Grissom not waiting around swinging at the first pitch as he did back in the fourth as he did back in the first here's Lemke big double back in the first inning John Mabry did not make the start here tonight Placed by Dimitri Young. One and one on Lemke. We have to wonder what kind of a difference it would have made to have a healthy Ray Langford at your disposal in this series. Two balls and a strike now two and two. I mean, we know the rotator cuff injury certainly affected his throwing. We saw him try to make one throw in the series, a very weak throw back into the infield. And you have to wonder how much it affected his swing. And he certainly didn't get very many good cuts in this series. Two out, nobody on. Lemke looks at ball three. Well, Lemke is making Venice work for this final out in the fifth. He's on base for the third time tonight. And another high delivery from a Cardinal pitcher. Well, this time a high changeup from Andy Bennis. You can see him shaking off, shaking off, shaking off Tom Pagnazzi. Got the pitch he wanted. It looked like a slider, rather. High slider. Right back up the middle. Kurt Simmons, the great left-hander with the Phillies, the Cardinals, the Cubs, used to say that the arms are attached to the shoulders. That's why you keep the ball down. If the ball, if your arms were on your knees, you'd keep the ball up. Mark Lemke is proving that there. Pitch after pitch to him that's up, and he is putting a line drive on the other end of it. One ball, one strike on Chipper Jones. If your arms were on your knees, it'd be tough to button your shirt, too. Yes, it would. Fifth inning history. Braves no runs, one hit. They leave a man. They've stranded five. They have scored ten. Behind Glavin. We are into the top of the sixth inning. The views from above are provided by Kroger Food Stores Blimp, the spirit of Atlanta. Piloting tonight, Tristano Caracciola, Glenn Hollander, with Nathan Crawford behind the West Cam camera. Here's ball one to Pagnazzi was lined out in his only at bat so far tonight. There's the second hit of the night for St. Louis. It belongs to Pagnazzi leading off here in the sixth inning. Well, tonight's Aflac trivia question from our good friends at Aflac who are headquartered here in Columbus, Georgia, who hit the only home run that provided a sudden death end to a decisive game of a league championship series. Decisive game meaning 
game five of a best of five series or game seven the best of seven series. Strike one on Gallego. Only one hit in this postseason. Ozzie Smith will bat next. You would have to believe the fans here in Atlanta will recognize this will be the last time they will see Ozzy in a big league uniform. Strike two on Gallego. He didn't like that call. Gallego's been made so aware of that outside pitch from Tom Glavin that he actually got a great pitch to hit right there. A fastball, middle in, down around the knees, and it just locked him up. Imagine what must be going through the mind of Ozzie Smith as he waits in the on-deck circle. All those memories, his Hall of Fame career. One out is Gallego is the fourth strikeout victim for Glavin. And that will bring in Ozzie. Territory, Jermaine Dye. That didn't last long. Two out in the sixth inning. began in 1978 in the big leagues. He spent only one year in the minor leagues in 1977. Four years with the Padres and he started his Hall of Fame run in 1982 in a Cardinal uniform. Tonight we say goodbye to a legend. Well, the night for Andy Bennis and most likely the 1996 season for Andy Bennis comes to a close. He is relieved as we get into the bottom of the sixth inning. Mark Petkaisic is back to work. Man, he has been busy. That is Rip Fair. Inside the bag, down the line, McGriff watches McGee head into the corner, and he will end up with a rare triple. I think McGee was waiting for it to end up hitting that area that juts out and it just stayed down the line. Fred McGriff had only one triple all year. Willie McGee playing the carom that never came. Right where the wall juts out there as McGriff hits a hanging curveball. It looked like Willie thought it was going to hit the first wall. It rolled right past that to the outfield wall. By the time he retrieved it, Fred lumbered around for a triple. Now Javi Lopez looks at ball one. So McGriff, who isn't running all that well, you can see he was thinking twice as he headed to second. Well, he had no choice. He had to go to third. And he ends up with a leadoff triple here in the sixth inning. Javier Lopez in the deep right center. Jordan can't get it. Another hit that ties the record. In the score is McGriff. And it's an 11 to nothing Atlanta lead.
took a look at the Yankee scouts earlier. If they're scouting Javier Lopez, they're probably writing down, can't get him out. Walk him. Pitch around him. He is on fire. That hit ties an all-time LCS record with 13 hits in this series for Javi Lopez. Now he's at second as Jermaine Dye chases Jimmy Williams out of the third base coaching box. A triple and a double. And Lopez has driven home three. tonight came back in the first into left field for Gantz one out well, die fouled a ball off his foot during the course of that at bat we saw Daryl Strawberry break his toe with a foul ball off the right foot says he can play with it he can live with the pain for another seven ball games if necessary in a World Series nothing hurts there are those Yankee scouts they have seen in the last three games the Braves scored 28 runs to the Cardinals one here's Andrew Jones Lopez at second with one out He told us he was going to do it. Bobby Cox before the game said that Andrew Jones was going to hit a home run tonight. let it roll foul. So Andrew Jones becomes the youngest player to hit a postseason home run. 19 years old. He took the high pitch from Beck Isaac and juiced it into the seats and left. It was part of our Aflac trivia question the other night. Who was the youngest player ever to hit a home run in postseason play? It was Mickey Mantle. In 1952, of course, for the Yankees. Think about having your name move ahead of Mickey Mantle. Wow. One out, nobody on, and strike two on Belliard. Andrew Jones, who closed out the regular season two of his last 25, came into this postseason game 0 for 5 in the series. Could arguably have three hits here tonight. One was ruled an error. As Chipper Jones, or I should say Andrew Jones, beat the throw from Clayton at short. It could be a three-hit night for Andrew Jones. Including his first postseason home run. Belliard, a base hit to right field. He's two out of three. We talked about the Aflac trivia question the other night. How about tonight's Aflac trivia question and answer? The only home run that provided a sudden death end to a decisive game of a league championship series. Chris Shambliss, game five in 76, ALCS over the Royals. And we will see Chris Shambliss on Saturday in the dugout for the Yankees. Glavin looks at ball one. Chris hit it off Mark Littell as part of the Yankee faithful followed him around the bases. <laughs> the hardest part of that home run was getting to home plate. Yeah. <laughs> this is Glavin. One and one. 
you can understand why Pekajic might be out of gas. He has appeared in every game of this series except one. A triple, a double, a home run, a single. The Braves as a team have hit for the cycle in this inning. Strike two on Glavin. Tony La Russa, who is as fierce a competitor as any manager in baseball, has to be bubbling underneath his skin in the Cardinal dugout. Well, the expectations going into game seven are so high. Tony La Russa told us today they thought they had a chance to win tonight. And you know he really believed that or he wouldn't have said it. And to have it go down the way it's going down up to this point has got to be a very bitter pill to swallow. One and two, the count on Glavin. Two out here in the sixth. And a big hand for Glavin as he heads off. The last time the Atlanta Braves played a decisive game in this ballpark, best four out of seven series, it was 1992. And who got the game winning hit? The most important hit in this city's history. Francisco Cabrera and he threw out the first pitch tonight before the ball game. Here's Grissom swinging at the first pitch base hit to right and the inning continues. The Cardinals have battled 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 in this series we're up three games to one. They lost on Monday night in St. Louis. They lost here last night to Maddox. Battled in that game. They lost it three to one. And tonight, a 13 to nothing Atlanta lead. We're only in the sixth. What a night for Andrew Jones. New pitcher coming in for St. Louis. Food Stores is proud to provide the aerial shots of tonight's NLCS game number seven from the world's largest blimp, the Spirit of Atlanta. And the spirit will live on of the Atlanta Braves in the 1996 postseason. I'll tell you, most of the pitches going to home plate tonight must look about that big to the Braves hitters because yeah. they are hitting yeah. some bullets all over this ballpark. And out of this ballpark. The numbers for Honeycutt during the regular season. What a year it's been for Rick Honeycutt. Setting up his old friend Dennis Eckersley. They've been quite a one-two punch during the regular season and more specifically in the postseason. Here's Lefty. Two hits tonight plus a walk. Oh and two from Honeycutt. Dennis Eckersley saved 30 games during the regular season. Likely will be back for one more year in 1997. Then he'll head to the Hall of Fame in 2003. One and two on Lemke. What a series for Lemke and Javi Lopez. Two guys you don't naturally think of with the Atlanta offense, but two guys were very big reasons why there even, even is a game seven. Two and two from Honeycutt. Two on, two out. Ball three on Lemke. Runners go, Lemke strikes out. Three runs, five hits, a 13 to nothing lead. Back to Fulton County after this from your local station. Good, clean, wholesome ballpark fun. Into the seventh inning. 13 to nothing Atlanta. McGee leads it off. 
Really old for two. He struck out. He's flied out. McGee was a part of the 1985 Cardinals who went through a similar series. He goes around for strike one. 1985, the Cardinals had a three games to one lead over the Royals, but lost the series four games to three and in game seven, an 11 to nothing Kansas City win and the Cardinals had only five hits. Tonight, the Cardinals have only two hits. Mike Balecki getting ready for Atlanta out of their bullpen as we play here in the seventh. Hard hit, but foul. Strike two. It's happened to the Cardinals twice in the World Series, trailing three games to one, as you mentioned, in 1985 to the Royals, and then in 1968 to the Detroit Tigers. Mickey Lolich winning game seven, four to one. 2-2 to McGee, base hit into left center field. And McGee is on to start the seventh inning. Well, Sunday you can take part in Terry's football quiz. True or false, encroachment is a defensive penalty. True. Encroachment is a defensive penalty. I, I should know. I once committed one. <laughs> It all begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. John Yurkovich with a little free time on his hands with the Jacksonville Jaguars. There's no crying in football. One on, nobody out. Gant flies to right. And Ron is 0 for 3. Got no chance to be an all Madden team member if you cry. Only, no. only if you make the other team cry. Only I think Yurkovich is Madden's kind of guy, though. Former Green Bay Packer, now with Jacksonville. And most football players, like we were saying the other night, got to run the football down the football field because you got to be a good football team to run the football, constantly yeah. identifying their sport and the ball and the field and Here's the players. A <laughs> former football player. <laughs> Brian Jordan, former Atlanta Falcon. Good football player. He was a good football player. Now he's a good baseball player. <laughs> he can defend one. against the football with the Falcons. Hit him, Brenly. Make him stop. <laughs> <laughs> one on, one out, and a 1-1 one, one count on Jordan. Speaking of football, not kidding about this, but because of that muscle-bound football physique, vulnerable to the fastball and on the hands. Broken bat. Good play, Jones. 5-4-3. It's time to stretch. These fans have been stretching all night. <laughs> Another standing ovation, bottom of the seventh. 13 to nothing in Atlanta. Well, a number of changes as we get into the bottom of the seventh for St. Louis. Mark Sweeney into the game. He's playing in left field. In center field is young 21-year-old Miguel Mejia. Over in right field is John Mabry. And now behind the plate for St. Louis is Danny Schaefer as Pagnazzi gets the rest of the night off. Looks like it. Braves and the New York Yankees. Yankees getting back to the World Series for the first time since 1981. Braves getting back to the World Series for the first time since 1995. It's a great sign. Well put together and he just pulled it down at the wrong time. Timing is everything. Chipper Jones looks at a strike from Rick Honeycutt. Had a great shot of Javier Lopez in the dugout. What a remarkable series he has had. 13 hits to tie a league championship series record. And speaking of catchers, there is only one player on either side that has not been in the league championship series. That's Joe Aroff, the young catcher for the Atlanta Braves. I wonder if Bobby Cox 
will put him in over the next couple of innings. Because he may not have a chance to play in the World Series unless it's a blowout. Jimber Jones leading it off with McGriff on deck. A 2-2 count. is on for the third time tonight. Well, the scouts are in all. Nick, Nick Michael, Stick, you are now the director of Major League Scouting for the Yankees. That's the 16th hit of the night. How about the offensive production for the Braves so far? Well, it's been very good. You know, we know they have the good pitching. We know they have a good ball club all the way around, but their their pitching is their exciting part. Now, what concerns you most as far as the Braves club coming in to play the Yankees on Saturday night? Well, you have to point to their pitching. Their pitching's awfully good, and we hope that, you know, we can just score some runs off of it and uh, get good pitching from uh, from our pitchers. McGriff gets into one to deep right field. Mabry back. 15 to nothing, Atlanta. set a new record for hits in an LCS. McGriff getting dialed back in. Lacking only a double to hit for the cycle. Lopez with 13 hits in this series. Right at Clayton. One out here in the seventh inning. The St. Louis Cardinals suffered their worst shutout loss since 1961. And two games later, they're being shut out worse than they were in game five. 14 to nothing in game five behind Smoltz. 15 to nothing here in game seven. Jermaine Dye has a hit tonight. Came way back in the first. Is going to be close. Gaetti, good play. Two up. Gaetti can still get it done. Four-time Gold Glove winner goes to his backhand. He knows he's got to hurry. Good strong throw right over the top. Very important for a third baseman to throw over the top to get that good carry. He did get died by a step and a half. Two out in the inning. Bases empty for Andrew Jones. Strike one from Honeycutt. Jones, a two run homer his last time up, making him the youngest player in the history of Major League Baseball to hit a postseason home run at the age of 19. They're dancing in the streets of the island of Curacao, right off the coast of Venezuela. Second major league player from there, the first one, Hensley Mullins of the Yankees. Boy, it is going to be fun to track the career of Andrew Jones. It really is. But Bobby Cox says he is the best to come out of this system since he's been here. A system that's produced Plesco, Lopez, Chipper Jones. Wow, scary thought. Two balls, two strikes on Andrew Jones. Keeping up with the Joneses. It ain't easy. LCS record 15 runs tonight. Well, that barely missed. And a 3 2 count on Jones. Two out, walk. 
from Honeycutt. And the fourth walk handed to Atlanta tonight. has been able to work tonight for St. Louis without giving up runs. Donovan Osborne two-thirds of an inning. Ben has four and a third innings. He gave up four after Osborne and given up six. Ben Kaisik just two-thirds of an inning, three runs on five hits. And now Honeycutt has allowed the leadoff hit by Chipper Jones and the two-run home run by McGriff. to his left. Inning over. Braves get two on a home run by McGriff and now after seven, game seven lead by 15. Beautiful night in Atlanta and they are having fun here at Fulton County Stadium. A sellout and a 15 to nothing lead through seven. Eighth inning, new pitcher, Balecki, deals ball one outside to Gaetti. Terry Pendleton takes over at third base. His 38 NLCS game. And Eddie Perez now at first. So Chipper Jones and McGriff are each out of the lineup for Bobby Cox. Gaetti pops it up. It's going to be a tough play for Perez. Very good play. One out. Here's Balecki during the regular season, four and three. Taking over where Glavin went seven shutout innings, allowing only three hits. Went to spring training without a job. Earned his way onto this Braves pitching staff, and he's done a fine job in that middle slash setup role. Here's Dimitri Young. Dimitri struck out his first time, then lined out to left. You can see why the Cardinals like what they have in Dimitri Young. The fourth player taken overall in the June draft in 1991. John Travolta and Mike Balecki we talked about it the other night. I don't know whether that uh, was John Travolta and Get Shorty. Matter of fact I don't know what movie I think that that's was. Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow OK. With Howie Long right. Howie Long in that movie. But uh, Balecki looks like John Travolta. And as a matter of fact John Travolta used to have hair that long back in the middle 70s when he did Saturday Night Fever. Welcome back, Potter. <laughs> Whoa. Down the left field line, off the bat of Dimitri Young, into the corner. Foul ball. It'll stay one and two. Vinny Barberino. Yeah, there you go, Vinny. As a matter of fact, that was his nickname. That was by Lucky's nickname when he was in high school. Vinny Barberino. Pitchers over the last three games have turned the Cardinal bats into punk fiction. Speaking of Travolta. Oh. Wow. You think about it, the Cardinals getting shut out here. They were shut out in game five, scoring one run last night. Right down the middle, and Young is the second out here in the eighth. Steve Avery getting loose for Atlanta. Avery has had very little work. In fact, the only action he has had was in game two of this NLCS. Avery got the final outs in the ninth inning with the Cardinals leading 8-3. Two out, nobody on from Mabry. First at bat of the night. the spot vacated by Pagnazzi. Good fan. 
fastball from Balecki, strike two. As you look ahead, the Atlanta Braves never like to say it before it's over, but going to move back to the World Series, try to defend their title, and take on the New York Yankees starting on Saturday night. Mabry strikes out. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. We'll talk about that matchup when we come back. Braves bat, they lead by 15. League Baseball's National League Championship Series is brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. By the U.S. Army, be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Pizza Hut. Now, we've got your pizza. Again, our thanks to Kroger for allowing us to use the spirit of Atlanta. The world's largest blimp. There's the score, 15 to nothing. Into the bottom of the eighth inning. Terry Pendleton will lead off his 38th NLCS game. That's a record. Caught by Guy Eddy. And Pendleton will stay hitless in this series. Still has the quickness of a cat out there, even though they call him the rat. But after this ball, like a piece of cheese. Gaetti still working hard. 15 to nothing, Atlanta. Bottom of the eighth inning. Grissom, 1 0. During the break, crowd here at Fulton County Stadium, another sellout. As it was here last night, singing New York, New York. Pretty good rendition, too. It wasn't Sinatra, but it wasn't bad. 2 0, the count on Grissom. New York, New York, sung with a southern accent. <laughs> 2 0, the count on Grissom. Hard hit, Gaetti again. He's been busy. Another good play, two out. So New York, New York. Saturday night, the World Series on Fox begins as the most storied team in baseball history returns to the Fall Classic after a 15-year absence, and it looks like they'll take on Atlanta. The World Series begins Saturday, 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific, exclusively here on Fox. Here is Mike Mordecai. He will bat for Mark Lemke, who had another two-hit night. Last time those two franchises, or I should say these two franchises, locked up in the World Series was when the Braves were the Milwaukee Braves back in 1957 and 58. The Braves won in 57. And the Yankees, trailing three games to one in 1958, came back to win three in a row. Names like Matthews, Spahn, Lou Burdett, Bill Bruton. Did he pitch? <laughs> 363 W's, winningest left-hander of all time. Mordecai pops it into center. Mejia. His first chance in game seven. That ends the inning. Good work by Tony Fossis. We go to the ninth. Braves out in front by 15. Well, the Atlanta Braves can break their own LCS record for margin of victory, which was set in game five at 14. They lead by 15 into the ninth inning with Gallego leading off against Steve Avery. Second appearance of this NLCS for Avery up the middle base hit Gallego his first of the night his second of the postseason. So Avery greeted with a hit. 
So not only are the Braves winning, but they're winning very effectively. And this means without John Smoltz having to pitch tonight, he will be the starter against the Yankees on Saturday night. And Bobby Cox telling us before the game that Denny Nagel probably will be the pitcher on Sunday night. With Alice a batting, Gallego is on the move. Not holding against him, so he will take second base at some point during this at bat. Alisea at the plate, batting in the number nine spot. Now Gallego stays put, and he gets the double play ball. Five, four, three, two out. Coming up, we'll award today's Chevrolet player of the game as the Braves are one out away from returning to defend their world championship. Our NASDAQ postgame show is coming up. To the final out. Reactions from both locker rooms. Strike one. Two balls and a strike. Chevrolet player of the game is Fred McGriff. McGriff, a big night, including a home run. He singled, he tripled, he homered. He is tonight's Chevrolet player of the game. The Atlanta Braves were down three games to one. They rallied to win games five, six, and seven. And they are headed back to the World Series to try and repeat. We'll come back and start our NASDAQ post-game show right after this 15 to nothing Atlanta in game seven. Margin of victory, a 15 to nothing Atlanta win. They head back to the World Series. We head down to the field in Steve Lyons. Hey, thanks, Joe. I'm with Fred McGriff, first baseman for the Braves. You're the player of the game tonight. Huge game for you tonight. Three for five with a big home run. Must feel good to get it going. Oh, yeah, and I know I had to do something when I had Harold Reynolds like analyzing my swing and everything. So I'm like, Fred, you better do something. You got Harold analyzing me. Yeah, talk about the job that Smoltz, Glavin, and Maddox did coming in here. You guys are down three to one. They had to put on their best performances, and they did. Oh, yeah, I mean, those guys showed you how awesome they are. And every night we go out and play, we know we got a chance. Every once in a while, they give up six or seven runs or so, but not very often. And so with us, it's basically we just got to try to score some runs because we know they're going to keep us in the game and give us a chance. And they did a great job. I mean, we're down 3-1. Um, the last game in St. Louis was a big game for us uh, to win that game and then get back home. And 
Now, when you're at home and you got the last at bat and you got all these fans behind you, you always got a chance. Now, you had to face so many lefties. You had Osborne. Every time they got the chance, they'd bring Honeycutt and Fossus in on you. You're going to face Andy Pettit in game one. Is that going to create any more problems for you? Uh, well, I go home sleeping. I mean, I go home at night thinking about sliders. <laughs> After seeing Fossus and Honeycutt the whole time. But uh, I've been watching Pettit all year. I uh, got a lot of friends over with the Yankees. And he's tough. I mean, he's probably going to win the Cy Young over there. And so... Uh, it's just like any other left. You just kind of try to stay in there against him. He's tough. Well, you're originally drafted by the Yankees, so you sort of get to go home and go play him. Hey, have a good time out there tonight. Joe, back up to you. All right, Steve. Thank you. Congratulations to McGriff and the Atlanta Braves. They're going back to the series. Stay tuned. We'll have more of the NASDAQ stock market postgame report coming up, including the presentation of the National League Championship Trophy and Series MVP Award. Back to Atlanta for the NASDAQ stock market postgame report. Now for the presentation of the National League Championship Trophy, the series' most valuable player award trophy. Let's go down to our Chip Carey. Chip. Okay, Joe Buck, thank you very much. The Atlanta Braves are going back to the World Series. A great series played in St. Louis and Atlanta. The Braves, of course, win the series. And here to present the trophy is National League President Leonard Coleman. Ted Turner, Bill Bartholomew, John Sherholtz, Stan Caston, Bobby Cox, Terry McGurk, and, of course, Javi Lopez. Your team played tremendously all season long. And you certainly show true grit and determination in coming back from a 3-1 to one deficit against a tough Cardinal team. Congratulations. I know you'll represent the National League very well in the World Series. And it's my pleasure to once again present you with the National League Championship Trophy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ted, you built quite a dynasty here in Atlanta. Well, it just wasn't me. It was the whole, uh, the whole organization from top to bottom, and uh, and then our great fans. Without them, you know, it's everybody. It's a team operation. How about those Yankees? Well, we're ready for them. You know, we last played them uh, when the team was in Milwaukee, I think, in '57 and '58. So it'll be great to go back to the Big Apple. All right, should be a great series, and that starts on Saturday. We got another piece of hardware to award the most valuable player for the National League Championship Series. That honor goes to Braves catcher Javier Lopez. Superb in the division championship and an absolutely phenomenal league championship series. Congratulations. Second catcher ever to win the National League Championship Series. Most valuable player, Daryl Porter, the other. What a series you had, Javier Lopez. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I also like to say thanks for the great crowd we have here. We wouldn't want it without you guys, so this is for you guys, for my wife, too. Well, one man who hasn't gotten, I think, enough credit for what this Braves team has done is the man that's holding that trophy right now, Braves skipper Bobby Cox. This is getting old hat here, Bobby. Congratulations on a great win. Thanks, Chip. It was a great series. The series against the Dodgers was great. The Cardinals are a fine organization. They can be very proud of their ball club. They played great baseball. and and deserve a lot of credit and I just on behalf of the ball players want to thank the fans they're the best thank you Bobby you're down three games to one did you ever worry about the outcome of this series well you always worry but I had an awful lot of confidence in our ball club and um, not only did we pitch well we hit the ball awfully well Chip did you ever congratulations and good luck against the Yankees all right the champagne is flowing down here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium We'll send it to break, and we'll be right back. All right, Chip, thank you very much. We'll be back for more post-game coverage from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium right after these messages. And Tommy, you go on to face the Yankees now. We talked about the pressure that was on you to bring it home for these guys, and you did it, and you're used to it. 
Well, they made my job real easy tonight. Uh, like I said yesterday, my job is to give these guys a chance to win. Little did I know the first inning was going to be that chance. So uh, that's the importance of going out there in that first inning and giving you guys a chance to get on top. And uh, we did it. And from that point on, my job was relatively easy. You know, this team has put a lot of emphasis on their pitchers swinging the bat. You went up there and stroked another hit. If you had any wheels, you'd have inside the park grand slam. I was thinking about it, believe me, but uh, I was trying to save a little something for when I went back out there. But you're right. I mean, uh, Jimmy Williams and Jim Beach have spent a lot of time with us working on our hitting, and you never know when it's going to make a difference. And that base hit turned out to be a big thing. I mean, a 3 nothing lead in the first is a lot different than a 6 nothing lead. So I was just fortunate I didn't hit it hard enough for Ronnie to get it. All right, Tommy, you got to sleep quick. We'll check you out up in New York, all right? I look forward to it. All right, Joe, back up to you guys. All right, Steve, thank you. We will take our final break, come back, and wrap things up. A fun night for Atlanta fans here at Fulton County Stadium. A 15 to nothing win, a win in game seven, and a trip back to the World Series. Well, not much drama here tonight in game seven. We had the drama here in game six last night with Maddox on the mound for Atlanta. Joined by Dave Winfield on my left and Tim McCarver. One quick word about St. Louis before we forget what the Cardinals accomplished this season. Quick word about Ozzy Smith. A wonderful career that came to close to a close here tonight in Atlanta. A remarkable career that started in San Diego and ended in Atlanta. And between those two bookends, 19 years of superb play. One more step for Ozzy, and that will be headed to the Hall of Fame in the year 2002. Well, Dave Winfield was a part of the last Yankee team to go to the World Series in 1981, and you can bet they are ready in the Bronx. They are about ready to explode up in New York. They haven't been back in so long, but they have a wonderful team this year. There's so many stories. Big Cecil Fielder, Bernie Williams, all these people. I look forward to a great series. These last three games here in Atlanta let me know it's going to be a great series. Yeah, the Atlanta Braves down three games to one, come back for the victory. Tim McCarver, a quick word. How do these Atlanta Braves match up with the Yankees? No, oh, I think they match up great. As a matter of fact, I think uh, the Atlanta Braves caught a break, if, if that's really the word. Being down three games to one, they are fueled going into the World Series. On all cylinders, their offense is superb, their defense, and that great pitching. Obviously, they're going to give the Yankees uh, everything they can handle. And, uh, and New York also a very resourceful ball club. The pitching sets up very well for the Atlanta Braves as they will start game number one with John Smoltz. So a final word. New York, here we come. The World Series coming up on Fox starting on Saturday night. New York, here comes Dave Winfield. That's right. I look forward to being there broadcasting this. It's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. And remember, exclusive World Series coverage right here on Fox. So tonight, a fifth to nothing win for Atlanta. They come back from down three games to one. First team in NLCS history to come back from that deficit to win. The Atlanta Braves are going back to defend their world championship title. It starts on Saturday night right here on Fox. They will party into the night here in Atlanta after their 15 to nothing win at Fulton County Stadium. The Braves come back and win this series four games to three. Saturday the World Series on Fox begins as the most storied team in baseball returns to the fall classic after a 15 year absence to battle the defending champion Atlanta Braves. It all began Saturday night 730 Eastern 430 Pacific exclusively right here on Fox. We said goodbye to a legend. Ozzy Smith waves farewell and from all of us with Fox Sports we say see you Saturday night in the Bronx Yankee Stadium Atlanta to defend their title against the American League champion New York Yankees tune us in Saturday night game one of the fall classic.